have a touch the pad. What in the world? Fused. Now then crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now um, I was expecting Tall Girl Jade to be here this morning pretty early on because we had a lot of work to do on our car and I received a message. Jade, what did that message say? Remember? My vicarious died. Yeah, her car wouldn't start. She was down in Auckland, ready to rock, come on up, get her gear on do tall girl stuff and it wouldn't start. In fact, in actual fact, it was you told me it was completely flat to the point where there were no lights on the dash, there was no clicking when turning the key, there was just nothing, was it? It was completely dead. So Jade said, hey Andy, I need a mechanic. Damsel in distress, can you come and rescue me? <laughs> so of course, how could I refuse? And I always put tall girl, tall girls first in my life. You guys should know that by now. So I chucked a lot of tools in the back of the car and zoomed off the 45 kilometers it was all the way down to Auckland, found where Jade was staying and had a quick look. And the battery that came out of the car uh, is that one there. And it hasn't got a date stamp on it, so I have no idea how old it is. Um, it's been in the car since you bought it by the looks of it, hasn't it? Mm. Yeah, but you've been having a few problems recently with the car. If it's been stood for a few days or a few weeks, it ha it's always had a flat battery, hasn't it? So with that sort of uh, background information, I thought, well, first thing to do is verify that the battery's flat. So I did a OCV test on it with a multimeter, and there's a video on that. And sure enough, it had two point something volts in it. And we're going to test that in a minute uh, just to verify it again. And so I, put, put a, I took a jumper battery with me and some jump leads, put that on and it wasn't quite enough to start the car. Unfortunately, my really good heavy duty jump leads are still back in England. I'm sure they're doing a different job now. I'm, I'm never gonna see those again. And the ones I have here, they're not actually quite as good. So there was only one thing left and I was pretty confident that the battery was dead. So we popped down to the local reps at Repco store and we bought a new battery. And unfortunately, because I was buying it through Repco, I couldn't get my super duper uh, trade price that I get from Nathan from uh, Coastal Auto Spares, and Repco took $175 off me for a battery mm. that I would normally pay for a Bosch battery, I would normally pay about 110 uh, from memory for the same size battery. And I believe the Bosch one is a far better quality battery than the Repco one, but hey, who knows? Anybody could have made that battery for Repco. All they do is put a sticker on it, so you just don't know, do you? Um, so, I thought now that the car is in the workshop, we should do some quick checks. We should check that the charging system is working correctly. And we should also check that there isn't a parasitic drain on the battery when the ignition is turned off. Now, a parasitic drain could be, for example, if you've got a saloon car, maybe the boot light hasn't turned off, the little boot light switch is broken, and you, the driver wouldn't know because you can't see the light on in the boot. Not unless you climb into the boot and shut the lid. Then you could test it, couldn't you? But then getting out again could be a bit of a problem, unless you've got a friend that you trust to open the boot. Otherwise, you're going right, to right, right. But seats, you can climb over the back seats onto the boot. Well, you can with yours. Yeah. You're lucky. But if it was a saloon car oh, true. with a with a boot, you know, you'd have to climb in the boot, shut the boot, and check that the light's gone out. Yeah. But then, how do you get back out of the boot again? To trust your friend. To trust your friend. <laughs> and if I was a friend, I'd leave you in there for a few hours just to. Just for a laugh, really. You know, just poke you with a stick every now and again and see what's going on. Maybe take you for a spin around the block. A bit of a laugh, wouldn't it? Take you over half a bridge. Yeah, I'd get you to climb then. Yeah, yeah, you would. And then you'd slam the lid shut and you'd go off to the pub and leave me there, wouldn't you? <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, pretty much. So what we need to do now is um, test the original battery. Now remember, if it is completely flat, we can't use uh, an output tester on it. We can't put a, you know, a high load tester on there. We'd have to charge it up. Uh, and I, I'm not going to waste my time doing that because there's already a new battery in the car. But this video will cover how to test uh, the charging rate on the car and how to test a parasitic drain. Two very simple tests, 
but tests are really important if you're trying to diagnose a duff battery. Okay, Jade, are you ready? Yep. You're always ready, are you, girl? Yep. Okay, let's go for it. It's been away. Oh, really? We missed a sneeze again. I sneezed when we went to get cider. Did you? Oh, I'm right. oh cider! Hey, you've got some cider. You've got some cider? Yes, please. You've been waiting for this, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because it's not cider Saturday, it's cider Sunday. That's mm. for you. And look at that, a leather man to open your ciders. Pretty posh, isn't it? Yeah, gorgeous. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. oh, that's so good. Different flavors the last time. You do like your apple ones. I do. I really like making videos with you. It's cool, good fun. But saying that, we need to crack on, don't we? True, true, true. Yeah, you carry on with your cider. Cool, yeah. Right, so we're going to test the old battery first, just for voltage. So, this is this is what I took with me to fix the checky car this morning. Mm -hmm. So we're just basically going to replicate what I did. I couldn't really film on site because well, it was private property. And, I didn't know who was going to be there and stuff. Okay, so we'll get rid of the little caps. They're, the, they're off the new battery. Don't need those anymore. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, you're already there. You see, red to red, black to negative. Oh, it's charged up. It's got 5.69 volts. Pretty damn flat, isn't it? So, what I'll do is I'll put that on charge, and then maybe one of the future videos, we'll just chuck it in there with the test. Yeah, that'd be easy, won't it? Okay, let's head over to the car and let's do, first of all, the charging system test. I'll show you how to do that. Dead easy. But you will need a multimeter. Right, Jade, you grab all of that. Okay. Give us a smile, Jade. Cool. Okay, so the first job with our meter is we're just going to check battery voltage, what we call OCV. Now, a true OCV is by disconnecting the ground cable, so... If you grab me a 10 mil spanner, Jade. Oh, hang on. There's one here, look. Sweet. We'll use this one. Just pull that up there. Right, so OCV. If you hold that and show the people. And we're going to go oh, wrong way around, Mr. Yeah. Young. So what have we got? What does it say? Does it say anything? It says nothing at all. Well, what's going on? Have a look. Right, yeah, it is. Andy sort of knows what he's doing. We got one now. There we go. So, are uh, oh, you reading it backwards? It's twelve point six nine. Okay, so twelve point six nine <laughs> is basically a fully charged battery. And that's what we'd expect as a brand new battery, and you've just driven fifty kilometres with it as well. So, it's probably got a little bit of surface charge on there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is pop that that ground back on again. That earth, the earth lead. Tighten that up. There we go. I'll, I'll try to get my backwards reading a bit better. Oh, it's really hard. I, I do struggle myself, actually. And what we're going to do now is just put some crocodile clips on these. You That's the one. You were testing me then, weren't you? You were just checking. You're very good at that kind of stuff. Right, I'll put that one on there. That's quite a useful little tab, isn't it? And we'll put that one, Mr. Insulating. Hang on. A little trick for you, look, you see? Yeah. Doesn't really hurt too much. Right, that's live, so be careful that's not going to ground out anywhere. Yeah. Okay, so at the moment you can see that the battery voltage has just dropped a fraction because there's obviously stuff running on the car in the background, but not a lot. Right, so I'm going to start the car up and we should then see an output from the alternator where it's going to bring that voltage up to between 14 and 14 and a half because we've got no real load at the moment. One of the batteries fully charged and all the lights and stuff are turned off. Okay, here goes. Right, we need to go on to a, a fast idle, so I'll just bring the revs up. Well 
well done. Reading backwards, that's fantastic. Yeah, 14.38 is absolutely fine. That's a really good reading. But we're not actually testing the alternator under any kind of load. So we don't know how, how much current it can give out. So the next test is an under load test. So we're going to put the headlights on. If it's got a rear demister on the window, we'll put that on. We'll put your heater on so your fan blower's working and stuff. Um, one thing you don't want to, to put on is your wipers or your indicators because they tend to draw uh, a you know, alternating current, not, not AC current, but when the wipers sort of sweep one way, there's more more current draw than when they go back. And obviously with your flashes, they flash on and flash off. So the meter tends to jump around a bit and we don't really want that. Okay. Right, so lights are going on, spotlight, rear view thing. Quite a significant drop, 11.8 volts, which is great. I'm going to start the engine up again. And again, fast idle. What have we got? You got it! Unplug it. Super job. Yeah, we can pull all this off now because we're going to be using the, the amperage side. So get rid of those, get rid of that. Oh, you're alright, don't worry. Fix that later on. Okay, so we've checked um, basically so far that we know the battery is fully charged. We've tested that and that's given us a, a very high reading, a 12.6, whatever it was, so that, that's fully charged. Um, and we've tested the alternator no load, which gave us 14. Point what was it? I can't remember now. 14 point, yeah, good, good memory. 40.38. And then we put everything under load, put all the lights on and everything. So the alternator is having to kick out a lot more current to compensate. And it met the match. It, it kept the voltage nice and high. So that was again a pass. So we know your alternator is working very well. You okay with your shirt? Yeah. It's looking great with your shirt today. Now, uh, one, one last thing to do is the parasitic drain test. So, so far, everything's looking good on your car. But the parasitic drain test is essentially when you turn your ignition off and you leave your car overnight there is some current draw from the battery you might have things like um you know a, a clock on the dashboard um, or maybe an immobilizer that flashes a little light on the dash a little red led so all those things have to be powered by the battery and more modern cars have more systems running in the background we call it older cars like this tend not to have very much at all so hopefully the current flow out of your battery when the ignition's off is going to be really low. And if it is, then it's a pass. Okay, so if you grab the meter, I'm going to undo the earth again. And we need to switch the meter around to... Amps. Onto, ah, you're on it, girl. Onto amps. Man, you're good. Honestly, you'll be making your own videos soon. Okay, so we're on amps, DC amps. And if you want to grab hold of that... Okay, we can, we can actually use these leads again, actually. I wonder if we can get those on there. Do we need oh, to? No, we don't. We don't really need to, do we? Okay, so I'll hold one. Okay, I'll hold that one on there. That's fine. And you hold that one on there. So what have we got? We've got... I can't even read it. Let me have a look. Uh, 0 0.02... Sorry, 0 0.1819. So it's very, very low current. 190 milliamps. Not even that. Yeah, 19 milliamps overall. Oh. Yeah, 0 0.019 amps flowing from the battery when the ignition's turned off. So there's no way that that's going to cause your battery to go flat. Yeah. Pretty good. Okay, back to the bench, Jade. That's right. Cheers. Cheers. Well, there you go, crew. Dead easy test using a multimeter, but you'll need one of those. First of all, we did a uh, OCV test. We checked that the battery was fully charged, so we know that the alternator is not, not having to charge it up. 
that shirt so distracting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we did a, um, so that was a voltage test, and then we checked the alternator output uh, at fast idle, no load, which is pretty good. That was a definite pass. Uh, and then we turn on lights and all, all the lots all the accessories we could do that weren't fluctuating current draw, so we couldn't use the indicators, couldn't use the the wipers, for example. Um, but as much stuff as you can, turn it all on, and that puts the alternator under load. Basically, when you go to the start the engine and you you rev it high, the alternator output has to be a lot higher to maintain that 14 and a half or 14.4 volts. And on this car, definitely a pass. Absolutely in very good condition. So even though I couldn't fully test the old battery because it was completely flat and it would have taken time to charge it up and then put a, a load tester on it. I had to make the call at the side of the road to get this car going again. And no reflection, now we've done these tests, I made the right call and I'm a lot happy about that. Even though it cost me $175, <laughs> I'm a lot happier that I made the right call. Yeah, so if you found this video helpful, why not click on the subscribe button You'll see a little gear icon turn up, click on the gear icon, and then you can tick the box and turn on notifications. And our friends down at YouTube will send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. And there's three or four a week on average, isn't there? We do, we do pretty well, especially when I have a full-time job and I'm all over the country and busy, busy. But I, I do a lot of editing on the mic time when I'm home. And don't sleep much. And drink cider. That's the way it is. Okay, uh, you'll also find me on... Facebook, Instagram... Google Plus and Twitter. Whoa, that's, you've got it right. What, four or five videos in a row now? You're doing a great job, Jade. Very impressed. <laughs> that's right. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. Uh, however, first point of contact, if you don't mind, uh, through the comments on YouTube. Because, you know, let's face it, that's where the videos are. And if you ask me a question, I answer it. Then somebody else might read your question and they'll read the answer. And it may answer their question, if you understand what I'm talking about. Who knows? Uh, there's also a uh, Patreon page, and it's a very interesting Patreon page now. There's information all about the history of the Andy Behind It YouTube channel, how it came to be, which is a bit weird to start off with, uh, and also up-and-coming projects. We've got things planned for the future, haven't we? Yeah, great plans for the future, and Jade's definitely in it. So rest assured, Jade will be around for a long time yet. Uh, there's also, on that Patreon page, uh, profiles of all the tool girls that have helped me out in the workshops over the last couple of years, well, 18 months. And as new tool girls come along, don't get too je jealous, Jade, there will be the odd other tool girl. You're my favourite. Oh, yeah, sweet. without a doubt. Um, <laughs> uh, so you can read all about the. Jeez. You can read all. Oh, again! Damn you! <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get you back later on. Not with lipstick, by the way. <laughs> uh, you can read what all that. What shade are you going to go for? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure of my colour, actually. I'll have to find out. Mm. <laughs> uh, you'll also be able to read all those different profiles of how those, the background onto each of the tool girls, how they you know, decided to join the channel, help out in the workshop, and um, you know, various attributes. Uh, and there's also a stack of photos uh, of those uh, that have been lifted from the videos that you can use as screen savers and whatever you like, basically. Yeah, maybe blow it up, put a big poster in your bedroom, I don't care, or in your office, at work, on your car, wherever you want it, on your phone, use it as a screensaver, what the hell, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, crew, well, it's been a long day, and I've still got to drive down to Taupo tonight, so I'm going to have to sign off, but it's been a good, good day, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, recovered your car, got it going again, fixed your car, we did the steering rack boots, and then we sort of ran out of time, so there you go. Okay, crew. Well, until next time, it's goodbye from Andy Mechanic. And goodbye from Jade. Sure is. Cheers, crew. Over and out. And you get the Oh,